Good evening. I was attempting to come on um, a few minutes ago with saying low connection. Then I had to decide which um, platform I was going to go on. But anyway, so on Wednesday just passed, which was normally my normally scheduled broadcast. So I normally come on Mondays and Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. And this Wednesday, my daughter had um, Shanika. Hey, beautiful. How are you? My daughter had early dismissal at the same time that my broadcast was. So I, you know, I didn't come on and I guess I needed to um, see you guys, right? To, to speak to you. But you see in the title, it says, you know, abundance versus scarcity and the shift that leaders need to make. So one of the things I've been doing recently, I've moved to a new area within this last year. So I've been going around in the community to different businesses and, you know, just getting to know people and bringing some awareness to how I could help them with their businesses. And man, it, all of this, everything that's transpiring made me want to come on and talk about this. So I only have a few minutes. I have to pick my daughter up from one of her practices. So I said, okay, I'm going to hop on uh, really quick. I'm going to share three principles that will help you shift from abundance to scarcity. And guys, you got to know that regardless of what level we are on, there's always another level. So um, I just want to help you with that. And I was thinking about when I owned a brick and mortar service-based business. And it was a season where um, it was a supposed recession. Now, I'm not saying that stuff wasn't going on in the economy, but I say supposed for a reason. But I remember during that time where everybody was saying, you know, it was slow, there were no clients, you know, like the money had really disappeared from off of the face of the earth. So you guys know the money never really goes anywhere. It just exchanges hands. I'm gonna say that one more time. Money never really goes anywhere. It simply exchanges hands. And it normally goes into the hands of those who um, have provided high levels of value, those who have uh, made awareness about what they have to offer, this or that. So during that time, I remember all I was hearing, everyone around me was talking about uh, the recession and you know, there, nobody was coming to get services, people weren't spending money, that's all that I was hearing. And for a short season, I began to believe that. I need you guys to hear me when I tell you this. This is why I share all the time how important it is to be around people um, with a growth mindset because we begin to adapt to whatever it, whatever it is that we hear. And whatever is transpiring in our life at this time, it is our truth. It is what we believe. So because I, be I began believing all the things and started operating my life, my business in fear. Now, that wasn't the only time. It was not only in my business. It was in my personal life. Because, you know, it's just people all around me that were speaking from so such a fear-based perspective. And whenever you don't believe that there is more, you will not take action, right? You will not do the necessary things that will actually bring um, increase or anything into your life, you'll actually find yourself in a place of complaining or, um, and normally we find people that we can complain with. <laughs> we normally find people who agree that there are no clients, there is no money. I mean, we find people that believe in the scarcity. But another thing that I can specifically remember happening around that time is the morale inside my business with my staff begin to slowly diminish. And this is why I put up here why leaders have to make this shift. Because oftentimes the space that you're thinking from, even the people that are you're, that are working with you, if you are a coach or a consultant, even those people are going to start thinking the same way that you think. They're going to begin um, Silva, how are you? They're going to begin even taking the same measures that you take. This is why it's so important that you around people with an abundance mindset so that you can shift out of it. Uh, I was on the phone with a client who, um, this person works in corporate 
And so there were some uncomfortable things going on on the job and, uh, you know, she was feeling stressed and just having a whole lot of stuff going on. Now, she's a kingdom believer, so I shared a principle with her, and I've taught on this principle once before. I think, I don't know if I've taught it publicly. I know I've taught it to my private clients, but I think I may have shared it in one of my private groups. And I don't even, unfortunately, have time to break it down because I would have to draw and go through all the steps. But it's Leviticus 23, 22. So I began to share that principle with her. And she is like, really, really gifted. <clears throat> but because she had not been hearing how gifted she was, how valuable she was, she her gift began to get buried in all of the stress. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Her gift began to get buried in all of the stress. So as we began going through our coaching session and I began sharing with her the things that I knew she was valuable in, it shifted something in her. She Actually, she called and I normally don't even take coaching calls this late, but she called like a few minutes before I came on and said, I just really needed to share with you how impactful our time was because what she ended up doing. Now, how many of you know that sometimes you may work in an environment and it's not necessarily a good environment? It just ain't a good environment. So that's kind of what was going on with her. But what I shared with her was whatever you're in need of, you got to give that away. And I know sometimes it doesn't make sense. And this is often why people don't shift from abundance to scarcity, because in order to receive something, you got to sow something. So she began creating this, um, she did like this tribute to her staff, right? Um, she had all these exercises and things that she did to, you know, make them feel better, uh, make them feel valuable. And she just called to tell me, how amazing the time was, how it shifted the atmosphere and how full mm. she was, mm. you know, how everything mm. uh, in her emotions, all of it had shifted. But it's because the very thing that she needed, she gave it away. And what oftentimes happens when we're in a space of scarcity, we're in so much fear, right? We're in so much fear. Um, that we don't have, we feel that we don't have anything to give away. So I'm going to share three things with you guys that can help to make the shift. And if you guys could do me a favor, uh, let me make sure before I move forward. Okay. If you guys could do me, um, sow what you want. If it's something that you need, you got to sow it. You got to sow it. Um, if you guys could do me a favor and share the broadcast out. I'm going to do a quick introduction before I get into the three things that will help to shift. And it's so important to me that leaders get this in this position because I can't reach but so many people, but the leaders who have people connected to them, um, it may be people they're leading in their family, it may be people they're leading in their job, or if they're coaching, if they own a a brick and mortar business, you know, it's important that I can get this message to leaders because they can make the shift and impact the people that they connect with. Um, Tristan, how are you, dear? Uh, and before I share those three principles, if you've never been on a live broadcast with me before, you've never ever experienced me and you're like, who is this lady? I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. I'm a growth strategist, business coach and mentor to women service-based business owners and aspiring coaches. Um, I operate from a three-point perspective, uh, abundance, mindset, <clears throat> personal growth, and business building. I completely and fully believe that those three things are completely needed if you want to grow a successful business um, and you're an entrepreneur. <clears throat> hey, so Joe Darling, how are you? Uh, I teach women service-based business owners how to brand, build, and profit in their business. Now, branding for me is huge because I realize I have been branding since 2003, I just didn't know what to call it. So I owned a brick and mortar service-based business. I owned the salon. Um, whenever we were full staff, I had 12 staff members that I was leading, all that good stuff, but I was branding my business. So my brochures, everything matched the culture of my place. And when I began to, and I'm also a kingdom entrepreneur, so you're probably going to hear me mention God, you know, while we're talking a little bit. Uh, but when I began to understand who I was and what my values were and what I wanted to create, I then created 
you know, my website and my logos and all those things as an extension of who I was as a brand. So all of you are creating a brand right now. Every single person who comes on and watches this broadcast who is an entrepreneur and owns a business, you have a brand. Whether you've been intentional about, I'm going to move the comments and then I'll come back and, and read them. Um, whether you've been intentional about it or not, you, you have a brand because your brand is how the marketplace sees you. And one of the biggest things that is important as we're building our business and our life is that we know who we are. Lord have mercy is that we know what our identity is. So I was sharing with you guys that um, the young lady that I was uh, speaking with, one of my clients, actually um, what she was dealing with, while she, why she was feeling so low is because she forgot her identity. She forgot who she was and her gifts. And so as we you know, gain new levels of clarity on that, she was able to implement um, from the space of the area that she was gifted in with her staff, it just shifted everything. It changed the entire atmosphere. So that is what I do for my clients. I help them find brand clarity and then define who their perfect people are who would find value in what it is that they do. So I shared with you guys when I first came on that there was a time where the country was supposedly in a recession and I started believing that because everybody around me was saying the same thing and so whatever you believe that's how you take action somebody put that in the comments whatever you believe that's how you take action whether it means you don't take action or you do i, I was talking to one of the local businesses in my area and when i went into their space i could tell you know in the atmosphere that you know there probably wasn't enough movement going on in the business and I shared with them something that a marketing professional shared with me years ago when I, when, I was, um, when I had a brick and mortar business. They said one of the biggest things that people do when they feel they are in lack as business owners is the first thing they cut is their marketing. Like if they had a budget for marketing or even if they were doing the marketing themselves, if they feel it's slow or they're in lack, one of the first things they cut is the marketing. And the people who do really well during supposed recessions or uh, times that other people are experiencing lack, they continue to do the thing that gets them in front of people. And so oftentimes the thing that we actually need to do is the thing that we don't do. That we don't do. And it's when we're operating from a space of scarcity. You guys get that? Whatever you believe, that's how you take action. Think about if you believe that um, there are no clients, it's, it's very likely that you aren't consistently marketing. People that are consistently marketing, they know that there are plenty of customers everywhere. They just need to get in front of them. Y'all don't hear me. Do you guys get that? So if you're not, you know, going live, if you're not posting videos, if you're not sharing about your business, if you're not marketing in some form of fashion, it's probably because somewhere internally you believe that either there are no clients or this is one of the things that I hear often, you know, the clients don't want to pay. I'm, I'm not going to go too far into that because I'm going to talk about that in the three things that I share. So one of the first things that you need to do right? When you want to shift from abundance from, well, scarcity to abundance is be open-minded, is be open-minded. So prior to my 30s, I, I never experienced any form of struggle that, that I knew of. Um, I was fortunate as a child growing up, you know, I just didn't know what lack was. But uh, in my 30s, you know, once I got married, I, I saw what struggle was. And during that time, everything in me fought against the struggle. Now, those around me kind of, um, instead of fighting against the struggle, they would say things where, you know, you want too much or, um, you know, why can't you just be normal? But what, what often happens, guys, is... If struggle is your normalcy, y'all don't hear me. If struggle is your normalcy, then you won't do anything different to come out of it. You'll kind of just keep doing the same thing all the time. And you're rarely open to hearing it done differently 
because that is your normalcy. So one of the things that's so important to me in this season is that I can bring a, about a new level of awareness about possibility. Because I believe when we're exposed to things differently, it changes everything around us. You guys tap the screen about that. If we're exposed to something different, it changes what we used to feel was normal. Guys, it's so easy to be on a struggle bus and feel like that's normal. Well, this is just life. Everybody's struggling. Everyone's not struggling. E everyone is not struggling, right? And so what happens when we're in the space and in the mindset of scarcity, we rarely are even open to hearing it differently. So the first thing, if you want to shift to even a new level of abundance. So maybe you're operating from a growth mindset already, but you want to step into a new space of abundance. You have to be open-minded. You have to be willing to hear it different from the way that you're currently doing it now. Because if what you were doing now would bring that new level in, you would already have it. Does that make sense? So you have to be extremely open to hearing it done differently. We're, we're creatures of habit, guys. We, we're creatures of habit. You know, whatever we've been doing for quite some time, we kind of don't want to move out of that routine, even if that thing ain't comfortable. We're just creatures of habit. And we got to be open to do it different because our habits is what produces everything that we have in our life. So the first thing you have to do is have an open mind. You got to be willing to say, I don't like it like this, or this isn't working, or I don't know. And I think one of the hardest things, especially with social media now, is for people to really say, I don't know. I need help. I can't get to the next level on my own. And one of the reasons is because we have so much information. We're um, saturated with information. It's, it's so easy to say, I already know that. I already know that. But how many of you know that knowing something different and doing something different is two different things. It's two different things. So the first thing is to have an open mind. The next thing is to move out of the space of limitation. Move out of the space of limitation. One of the biggest things, even as I'm out in the community getting to know new businesses in my area, I promise you, I hear limitation. I, I want to go into like a full-on um class, <laughs> you know, when I'm meeting different people. Um, and I do shift into talking to them about an abundance mindset when they say things like, you know, well, nobody will really pay that in this area. And I said, well, I'm one of the people who would have paid what we're talking about. So I know those people do exist, but what needs to happen possibly is you need to create a new level of value so that the people who would actually pay for that would, would see you. Does that make sense to anyone? Does that make sense to anyone? So the second thing is to move out of limitation. You have to stop saying, it's not possible. I'm not enough. <laughs> you know, there is no money. Times are hard. All of that is from a limited space. Tracy, how are you? Move out of the space of limitation. Now, this is one of the things that really shifted, shifted for me. So it was really important to me to become debt-free. And the, the only thing about becoming debt-free is the mindset that it can also carry. And I'm going somewhere. Because you guys think about it. Most of the time, when people share with you about becoming debt-free, they tell you to cut back all your spending, don't do anything, things of that nature. I do think you need to be a good steward of your money because that means if not, uh, what will happen is even if someone gave you a million dollars, you would tear it to pieces. You guys get that? So there does need to be an activation of you becoming a great steward over your money. But this is where the line gets a little blurry, right? Sometimes you need to say, instead of how can I stop living, how can I earn more? 
How can I earn more? And I think it's important that you have a level of harmony between those two things. You guys get that? So you need to check your spending because a lot of people buy what they want and beg for what they need. I mean, it's just really true. Or they spend their money on things that aren't going to give them a return. Because oftentimes we're people who like to be entertained more than we like to be influenced. Influence change your life. Entertainment gives you joy for the moment. Did, did y'all hear that? Did you guys get that? Right? Hey, Ashley, dear. So it's important that if you're considering debt freedom, this is what happens sometimes we're in, when we're in that uh, space where we want to become debt free. We pass over the opportunities that will actually allow us to cre create more. So one of the things I do, I have a, a course called Get Your Money, Get Your Life. I'm not selling the course, anything like that. I, I haven't sold it in quite some time. It's actually included in my coaching programs now, but um, I started teaching the course, I mean, maybe back, back in 2016. But one of the things I tell them to do is while you're, you know, paying down on your debt and developing new habits, because it's all habits, guys, everything, all of it is habits. So while you're paying down on debt or creating and developing new habits, you have to include something that you can sew into in order to, you know, do better. You, you got to find something because if not, what's going to happen is you're not going to earn any more money than you were earning before. You're just going to be able to kind of just pay your bills, right? So you also have to have the mindset of abundance where you're saying, well, I know I got to have a portion of what I'm doing in order to sow into something that's going to allow me to increase. So one of the things I teach my clients to do is whenever they're, we're talking about maybe an expense or something else they want to do, I say, okay, let's figure out how you can create some more money over this next month. Lord have mercy. That's operating from a space of abundance. Does that make sense? You guys put yes in the comments if that makes sense to you all. Does that make sense to you all? Because sometimes when you, you're feeling like you, you got to just stop spending what happens is you never step into a space where you have to become more. How many of you know in order to earn more revenue, you have to become more? Somebody put me in the comments. If you know in order to earn more revenue, you have to become more. Hey, Keisha, dear, how are you? You got to earn more. And where most people struggle is in the becoming part what is required in order for them to become more. So when we're, we gotta be so careful, we gotta have harmony. Remember I said, um, move out of limitation. And sometimes when we're attempting to become debt free, um, we step into a space of limitation instead of a space of expansion. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So one, you gotta have an open mind because Wherever you are now, it's really clear that whatever it is you're doing is not going to get you to the next level. We only know, I only know, you know, what I know on this level. It may not be the level that you're on, but this is all I know at this level. So there's something else that I have to know. There's another level of abundance I have to step into for my next level. We all do. And, and remember, I share with you guys, when we're in a space of limitation, we think everything is limited. And see, this is... I, I don't want to go too, too far into it, but um, normally people who are in lack stay in that space because they are afraid to spend on the things that are actually going to give them a return on their investment. And so you guys heard the phrase, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. See, oftentimes when we hear that phrase, we think it's because the rich are, are doing something wicked or wrong, but it's just that oftentimes those who are operating in a scarcity mindset aren't doing what's going to bring new levels of wealth into their life because they're afraid to spend. And see, what happens is you get so afraid to spend that eventually you feel like you need to reward yourself. And then what you go reward yourself on, it, it brings no return. It brings no return on investment. But guys, did you guys know the best form of self-care you could ever make? You, you guys know what the, the best form of self-care you could ever make? It's to become a better you. That's the best. Listen, when you get your life, when you get your whole life, that's the best form of self-care. I mean, I don't know how many of you have struggled before I have. It ain't a good feeling. 
all the thoughts, you know, it's just so much going on. Now, I want to share with you guys that really when we stay in spaces that are uncomfortable for, for us, it comes from a space of self-worth. It comes from a space of self-worth. So I'm going to tell you how I came up with this revelation. So in my previous marriage, when we were going through things, I would be thinking thoughts like, you know, what is he up to? Or, you know, maybe absorbing the uncomfortable conversations we were constantly having all the time. And the Holy Spirit asked me, do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then I heard God clearly say, then why do you think thoughts that hurt you? Guys, that revelation changed my life because one, in that moment, I realized that I could control my thinking. Oh, Lord have mercy. In that moment, I realized that I could control my thinking. But I was also able to take that same statement about my thoughts. Like I, I can take authority over my thoughts. And the fact that, hey, I wasn't really loving myself to the level that I should. I was able to line it up with every area of my life. I was able to say, well, if you really, really loved yourself, you get your finances straight. You would do the actions. You would take the steps. You would move on the opportunities. All of it is from a space of self-love, guys. Everything that's uncomfortable in your life that is a continuous cycle or flow, there's a level of love for yourself that needs to be incorporated in your life. Does this make sense for you guys? Does this make sense? I pray that this is making sense. And so when I, when I heard that statement from God about if I love myself, why did I think thoughts and understand that I could control my thinking, it's when I became even more... Um, determined to teach about mindset. This is why I talk about mindset all the time, guys. And whenever I come on like this, it's just never enough time for me to go deeply into it because it's so, mindset is so progressive. It's so progressive. And so I'm never holding back with you guys when I come on. It's just, I couldn't teach this. I couldn't teach the mindset concepts in a short setting um, like this. Do you guys get that? So the second thing is, um, uh, moving out of limitation. You got to stop feeling like everything is, is limited. Money, opportunities, resources. It's only as limited as you think. It's not from an abundant space. And this last thing is, um, and many people are, are here, whether they're six-figure earners, multiple six-figure, many people are in the space that I'm going to mention now. And it's the space of just enough. The space of just enough. I was sharing with a friend that when I was in beauty school, so I went to college, left college, you know, went to beauty school. And I remember the instructors would sign off the sheets for um, certain services. So I didn't get a lot of um, training on certain services. So whoever came in at what I was really good at, they would give me all of those tickets, right? So see all of this, this is why I say leaders have to make the shift because really what they were teaching me was that I could do just enough and get by. But if I learned every single um, texture, every single service, it, put, it would put me in a space of abundance. Does that make sense to you guys? This is why I say leaders have to shift because if not, you're going to pass on the mindset that you have to everybody you teach, everyone you train, everyone you coach, everyone who comes to work in your space, and you won't do it intentionally, but you'll pass it on. But what they were showing me was I could kind of skim over things and get by. The spirit of just enough. Many people are in a space of just enough. So what happens when they're building their business or uh, their career, they do just enough. So they may learn uh, the surface level of a technique, right? And that thing will, it'll maintain them, but it'll also keep them in a space in their life of just enough. This is why I say go deep before you go wide. 
get in a space of mastery in your life because once you begin to master things, you're seen as the expert and people pay experts more than they pay general people. Does that make sense to you guys? But when we're operating from a space of just enough, we do just enough. It's not a space of abundance. I'm gonna give you guys a really, I know this seems like a simple you know, thing, but I feel it's the gray areas that we stay in often that keep us in lack or either in limitation. So imagine you go to the grocery store and you, um, you, you have the grocery cart and you're like, I don't feel like walking back up there to the store. The cart that you, the cart holder is way over there. I'm just going to leave it over here, right? When you leave it, it's from a space of, it's not an abundant space because abundance always goes the extra mile. See, let me share with you guys that we serve God, you know, Jesus. I mean, that's who I believe in. I'm not sure who you guys serve, so I shouldn't have said that, but I do work with a lot of kingdom believers. So that's my belief. But, you know, some people believe in the universe, but I didn't want you guys to get it twisted when I get ready to speak about the universe because the God that I serve created the universe. Okay. So I want to share with you guys that if you're not doing abundant things, then you can't attract abundance into your life. And so leaving that is not abundant. It's not an abundant act. It's not an abundant principle. And I know it seems really, really small, but remember I said, that's the space of just enough. It's, I mean, I don't know how many of you, if you want to be honest with yourself, put me in the comments if you feel like there are some areas where you'll just do just enough. Nobody want to say that. I know that I had to go and look at the areas in my life where, where is it that you're doing just enough, Tan? Because that's not abundant. It's not abundant. But what happens is when we operate in that space of just enough, when we see people soaring and we're wondering like, you know, how are they making moves? How is their life shifting and changing? In two years, I transitioned from, you know, uh, being a service-based provider hand-to-hand -to, -hand to coaching and enough to replace my income. But it wasn't because I did just enough. See, the thing about mindset is that it rolls over to every single area of our life. We are operating in things that we don't even realize we operate in. So let's take it to, let's take it to church <laughs> for a minute, guys. So there are a lot of people who struggle with tithing. They struggle with the concept or the theology behind tithing. But when you're operating in a space of abundance, tithing not, it's not an issue. It's not an issue. Do you guys get that? I want to teach that Leviticus 23, 22 so bad. But I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to explain it. But if you guys maybe read it and ask God to reveal, um, you know, what it means to you. Um, I, I think I am going to, I'll probably teach it at my becoming more. It's not on my um, content, but I think it, it's needed. I think it'll help the concept, especially for those who come who are believers, but if you want to step into a space of abundance, guys, abundance is it's a mindset, it's a way of being. So oftentimes when we think abundance, we're thinking about what we can receive, but it's really from a space of how we're giving, you know, how we're putting things out into the universe, <laughs> into the atmosphere, right? And so when we're in a scarcity mindset, we're in that mindset so bad that we don't release anything. We start hoarding things. We start um, being selfish. Um, we start being angry. I mean, and listen, there's a scripture that says you'll sow in tears. Don't quote me on it. Y'all gonna have to Google it, okay? Um, you'll sow in tears, but you'll reap in joy. So when I get revelation on that particular scripture, it means that... Um, when I'm sowing, it's going to be sacrificial. It might hurt a little bit. Do you guys get that? When I'm sowing, it's going to, you know, it'll be so sacrificial that it may hurt a little bit. So I may do it crying, but you will reap in joy. Most people are waiting for joy to come first and then reap. 
But remember I shared with you guys earlier that um, we can take authority over our mind, which means we can control our thoughts, which means that we can operate in joy. You're going to have to get in joy before the harvest comes. And this is why I shared this with you guys. This is how I got the revelation of that scripture. Because I don't know a whole lot of angry people <laughs> or frustrated people that even have the energy that people want to sow into. Do you guys get that? Do you guys get that? So as I said, you'll um, sow in tears. So it may hurt a little bit. It may be sacrificial. Sacrificial can even be your time. I was working on a project the other day and man, it took everything in me to finish that project. It was something that I don't normally do, but I knew for the harvest that I'm in expectation of, I had to do that thing. So it hurt a little bit. <laughs> right? It hurt a little bit, but the harvest will come. I'm already happy. There is something about completing stuff too, guys. So I just wanted to share those three things with you guys. I didn't come on on Wednesday. And I also want to invite you to my workshop in Raleigh. It's October the 6th, guys. I really want as many of you as I can fit in there. Um, in the room. I want to support you on a deeper level because I believe that your mindset is everything. I'll be teaching about abundance mindset principles, um, how I made the shift from going from uh, my highest price product was 1K to 6K in a matter of like it was a thought. It was, I stepped into a new space of possibility. I'm going to teach on that. Um, and then not only did I increase the product, but um, less than a week, I had someone sign up and I didn't even have the product finished. Do you guys get that? I stepped into a new space of expansion, but there were some things that I had to do internally within myself to even say, okay, I'm going to do this at 6K because I know it's that valuable. So I'll be teaching um, abundance mindset principle, principles. I'll be talking about breaking unwanted cycles in your life and in your business. And then I'll be teaching on how to step into new spaces of expansion. How to step into new spaces of expansion. And guys, it's only $97. $97. Bucks. My workshops and trainings are anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000. Once a year, I do um, a, a training of this nature so that it will allow more people to, you know, to be able to allow me to support them. Um, and this is that one opportunity this year. So it's Raleigh, North Carolina. It's at the residence in downtown Salisbury Street. But when you go to the link, I put it up in top of the broadcast. Um, it will give you all of the details and I'll come back and put it in the comments. Keisha says, what was number three? I was listening too hard. Uh, number three was moving out of the space of just enough. Moving out of the space of just enough. Now, just enough can go for you guys that are really doing well, but in your mind, you're like, mm, I'm good. I'm good. But why wouldn't you want more? It'll put you in a position to give more, to serve more. You know, it's just a space of expansion. So often, hey, Christy, darling, we live in a space of just enough. I'm going to give you guys one more. So um, Many hands make light work. I'm gonna tie this in with abundance. One of the things, one of the struggles I find with most entrepreneurs is because we've become solo entrepreneurs. So we're the accountant, we're the marketer. We do everything in the business, right? As solopreneurs. But many hands make light work. That's a space of abundance. When you begin bringing people in and duplicating your processes with them, it's a space of abundance you open up your free time and you increase your revenue. And so depending on where you're at, you got to set a vision that's further out than where you are now. The number of businesses that I went to, one of the last things I ask when I leave the business is where do you see yourself in the next five or 10 years? Most people had no idea, no idea. And that's not a space of abundance because abundance is always more, right? What do I see greater for my life and my business. So that's what I help my clients to do. Step into new spaces of expansion. You know, abundance is really our birthright. So if it's not transpiring, then we got to know something is off. Something is off because this is not what God intended for us. He wanted us to be, I, I believe in my whole heart that God wants 
all of us to be wealthy so that we can be more impactful. I just don't believe that the poor can feed the poor. And most of you who follow me are givers. You want to do big things in the world by way of giving and, and serving. And um, remember I said, whatever, wherever we're at in our life is from a space of self-worth. All of it. All of it. As we begin to really love ourselves more, we do the stuff that will change our life. Whatever that needs to be. We get in, we take the opportunities, we, we do uncomfortable things until our life gets comfortable, right? It's all from a space of self-love, all of it. Let's give God the glory for that because I told you I got that revelation years ago when he shared, why would you think thoughts that hurt you if you love yourself? So I began asking myself, well, why would you let this area of your life look like this or that area if you love yourself? What is it that you need to do? And then I committed to that from a space of love and understanding that I was created to prosper. You guys get that? That's my take. I got to go pick up my baby. Guys, you guys meet me October the 6th at the conference. Listen, if it's something you're not, I said conference, but it's, it's a workshop, guys. It's not a conference. It's a workshop, three-hour workshop. And then the fourth hour, I'm going to do open forum. I'll be answering business and life questions um, for an entire hour. The value of, of that is astronomical um, for those of you who are in business. But if you are saying, yeah, I think I want to go to that. Uh, another thing is uh, we think abundance and scarcity thinks differently. It, they think completely different. And leaders take action immediately because if not, you allow all this other stuff to change your mind. And I don't know if you guys heard me say that we pass over opportunities regularly pass over opportunities regularly. So if you feel it's something that you need, you're ready to go to your next level, step into new spaces of expansion, save your seat today, right? You don't have to wait until the last minute. I'm gonna teach on some of those things as well. But you guys have a super amazing evening. I pray that I bless you. Three things that you can do to shift into abundance. Have an open mind, step, move out of the space of limitation and move away from the space of just enough peace.